Hey guys, welcome back to some more Dota 2 1v1 mid. Today I have a feeling that I'm going to pick somebody along the lines of Necrophos just because he is so rude. He will pretty much constantly deal damage to the enemy. And I'm I'm looking to try him out in the mid lane scenario 1v1. So, let's jump into a game and see how we do. Okay, so we're into the game. Now, as I've already said, I think I'm going to be picking Necrophos for this job. So you can see here this very green looking chap. This is who I'm going to be picking today. He's normally quite a strong hero in any laning situation. That is why I am going to be picking him for my 1v1 challenge. He deals constant damage with one of his abilities. And we're going to try and utilize that to give us the lane dominance we need. Righty then, so today's opponent is Outworld Devourer. Now, this is a that is a hero that would normally be put into the mid lane and can be really, really quite powerful there. He basically sort of messes with your mana. He removes your intelligence stats and that reduces your mana pool. So that's how that hero works, and you'll, you'll see in a second, he'll probably try and do it on me so I have a small mana pool. It can be a really difficult thing to deal with. However, despite all that, I'll still constantly be putting out a damage source, as you can see he's slightly damaged, with my Heartstopper's Aura, my passive. Now at level 1, it's not massive damage, it's just a bit of sort of chip damage. There we go. Right, so he's now drained some of my intelligence stats. Just means I have less mana to work with. And you can see things like this. They have a mana cost. So that, that's what sort of gives that hero the edge, especially against certain heroes in certain situations. So he can, he can be quite a brutal opponent. But I think with Necrophos we'll, we'll be doing okay against him, no matter how many times he tries to catch me out. We, we should just be fine. Yeah, he really wants to get me again. Oh, I missed. I missed my ability. That's a bit of a shame. I think we're, we're going to ignore our second pass of the Sadist, which gives us HP and mana regen for every last hit or deny we get in. We're going to go all out on the Heartstopper's Aura and really just like brute force our way into lane even if we don't have mana. That's my ambition here. Alright, so we've got our bottle up and running now, which gives us a source of mana and HP regen. It's really, really common for a mid hero to build this sort of thing. Just make sure that we have a constant flow of being able to spam out our abilities. So it's a little annoying, but he's only got one stack on me so far. Though I'm pretty confident he's going to try do something like that again. So now he's on low HP, we can just force him back. We can relax. We have quite a lot of dominance in this lane. And we can just start harassing him. Not a problem. So that's that's my strategy here. Rather than go for regen of mana and HP, just just go for the constant harass, the constant damage. I mean, you can see we're comfortably comfortably outlaning this guy, and if he's not careful, he will get picked off. This is where ideally I could be, you know, level six, have my ultimate, because at that HP he's at. I would just straight up kill him. He would just instantly die from my ultimate. Because it, how it works is that you uh, he takes damage based on the HP he has missing. So the less HP he has, the more powerful this ability becomes. So at, after a certain point, we've effectively secured ourselves just an instant hit kill. If you see what I'm trying to say there. And it's... 
It's a really powerful spell. It also adds time to their death counter, which is powerful in any stage of a game, but it can be really, really, really morale damaging at the start, just because you'll have so long to respawn. I mean, he can't really trade hits with me at this point. It's just not worth his time. I can get all up in his face and he can't stop me doing anything. Right, we're definitely... I'm tempted, actually, not to go for the power treads that recommend I'm tempted to go for phase boots, just so we have more right-click damage, and we can keep up to him with the phase burst active that the phase boots give you. I mean, you... You're not going to necessarily build the conventional way for a 1v1 mid-match, as I've explained in a previous video. You build to win, and win quickly. It's not about taking your time. None of that. That's not what we're trying to achieve here. Okay, so the fact that this guy is now missing makes me want to assume that he's gone for a rune. So, that in turn makes me believe he's gone for a bottle. Oh, he has. I've just checked his items, he hasn't. I'm not sure why he was missing. He might have just been checking the rune anyway, which is which is cool by me. Okay, so this guy now is in trouble. Ah, uh, he is faster than me though. Oh, he wasn't quite low enough for me to do anything now, unfortunately. My ultimate just... I wasn't quite at the threshold, and now it's on cooldown. I'm a bit annoyed. I should have maybe waited, but... Hey ho. Forcing him back to base. I'm not in too much of a worry about that. Just means we can sit in the lane here, we can gather more last hits, therefore more money, and more XP, which makes us stronger. And he he has to meanwhile just go back, heal up, spend money to TP and or waste more time um, by walking back, and he's not getting this XP and money. Right, so now he's back to lane. A little annoying. He can chase me down if he wants. I shouldn't be in too much of a situation there. Though he has now pretty much grabbed the top rune, and I can't contest that. So we're going to venture down to the bot lane. To the bot rune, I beg your pardon. See if he's not taken up. Okay, invis. Invisibility rune, that's big. That is a big, big, big rune to be having right here. It means we can really pretty much catch him out with the element of surprise. I'm assuming now he's hit level 6, I want to say. 7. Oh, wow. Oh, now, that isn't the best. I didn't really expect him to be that far ahead of me, in all honesty. It is, however, what it is. I cannot do anything about it. I am 2 level 7. So, pretty pleased with that. I don't know. I'm not sure which way this is going to quite spin. Okay, so now that I'm in this, he's probably just going to back up all the way. That should be the kill. There we go. Boom! We have it. First blood, that invis rune, he just didn't... I'm sure he must have seen me go invis to begin with. Like, I'm positive he can't not have done. Strange. Strange. Anyway. We are now really in, a, in the driving seat position here. This is exactly what we were looking for, to get that, that first one. And look how long he's dead for. It's only eight minutes into the game and he's dead for so long already. We can just pressure his tower. <laughs> he's, he's fortified his tower, he's that scared of this. Because he's out for just that long a time. Right, so we've got our phase boots now, which means for a burst we can run... Oh, haste rune here, that's big. We can run out max move speed once we activate that. And hopefully we can catch him out again with that, so... No, but with the phase boots, it just allows a temporary speed burst every so often. Which will allow us to keep up with him. Because he does have a better movement speed than me, normally. But... 
With the phase, we should be keeping up with him and dealing that damage. Keep him close to him. Just keep annoying him. Obviously, if he does keep doing that, I will be in a bit of bother. As it, because I won't have the mana to actually pull off my spells. So I don't want to get caught out too often. However, though, we do have our ultimate up and ready again. He's just not low enough for me to be able to pounce. But him staying in lane with me, don't worry. I'm Heartstopper's aura will get the job done. I mean, look, he's just come back, and look how quickly his HP has dropped. It's quite crazy. Yeah, it, it's one of the better passes in the game, in my opinion. And I'm sure a lot of people who play this game frequently will agree with me there. Anyway, we can now go ahead and max out the Heartstopper's aura means now it is at its maximum efficiency minus 1.5% of his HP pool every single second that's that's a lot considering he has to stand in lane with me all of this time just he's just dropping and he's gonna really want to get his um astral imprisonment back onto me so that he has that uh, intelligence advantage that's what he's going to be looking to try and achieve. So he has to come to me, basically, right now. I'm in full power position right here. As you can see, the haste rune is active. I'm going to take that time to see what's top. Illusion rune. I'm not sure what we can make happen with that. I'm going for this. We should have this. Boom! There we go. The two runes just absolutely caught him out. Oh yes indeed. Well, what a what an easy win in all honesty. I mean I knew what I had to do, I knew what he needed to do, and just worked around that pretty much. And in the end, quite easily outlaned him. So there you go, there's the power of Necrophos in the mid lane, despite coming up against regular mid lane heroes. Anyway, that is all for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this episode, please leave a like and leave any feedback that I could use to improve my videos in the future. Thank you very much. Take care.